so at this time, Mr. Goodale, um, you have the right of allocution. Uh, do you wish to make a statement before I sentence you? Uh, Your Honor, before you begin, I would uh, request permission to reorient this chair so you can face uh, the great family. Go ahead. The only, uh, just so Laura can hear him, so I don't know if we need to put a mic on him. Yeah. say I'm grateful for this chance to speak my piece. I offer my sincerest apologies to the Graber family, but I know my words will never be enough. I've had time to think on what to say, and I'm sorry, truly sorry. What I've taken can never be replaced. Every day I wish I could go back and stop myself, prevent this loss, and this pain that I've caused everyone. Everyone in the community and outside of it, those closest to me and those closest to the Graper family as well as the Graper family. I didn't know how taking Ms. Graper's life would affect you. I can't comprehend losing a loved one in such an awful way. I'm sorry I didn't stop this from happening in the first place. And I'm understanding now that Ms. Graber meant so much to so many people. She was a support to the community and those close to her. And she was a caregiver to her family her children and to her own husband. I'm so sorry. To Mrs. Graber's friends and the members of her church, I'm truly sorry for what I've taken from you. I never stopped to consider the community to everyone at Fairfield High School who felt unsafe, those who were scared, those who lost hope. I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry how my actions have affected you. I want an apology to all my friends. I'm sorry for the stigma placed on you just for having known me. Zach, Habib, Zoe and John, I didn't care. I didn't even know what this had done to you. And I'm sorry. And Dad, <laughs> I'm sorry that I let you down in so many ways. Jackie and Sophia, you've given so much to me. I'm supposed to be helping you and Dominic right now, Jackie, but I can't. Instead of caused so much stress and so much loss and so much grief. And to all of my siblings, I took your little brother. And Dad, I took your son from you. Two years ago, I made the worst decision of my life. And I take full responsibility for what I did. And today, as a young man, I can begin to pay for that. I can never give back what I've taken. But I hope that this situation doesn't end as tragically as it began, and that someday something positive can come from this tragedy. <laughs> I know that my words will never be enough, but to Miss Graber and all her family, 
I'm truly sorry. Thank you. Does the state want to be heard on sentence? Yes, Your Honor. This Your Honor, it's important to keep in mind how we got here today. As Jeremy detailed in, in his Snapchat messages, the, um, the last thing she ever saw was Jeremy's face. She was walking in the park on November 2nd, 2021. She was coming up the hill. Jeremy was wearing a, a mask, a shock of blonde hair coming down. He was walking towards her. She, she got frightened. She got scared. And he took down his mask to reassure her. And he smiled. She smiled back. And he was looking at her in the eyes when Shaden Miller walked up behind her wearing yellow gloves and a baseball bat and took her life. Jeremy was the last face that she saw. He then aided Jaden in dragging her into the woods and hit her in the head five times, ending her life. Jeremy acted in consort with the co-defendant in this case. And the state's recommendation is based on a lot of factors. 902.1, sub two, sub B, sub two, sub A, details a number of factors that the court needs to keep in mind when considering the uh, appropriate and effective judgment and sentence to pass down for this crime. Subsection A indicates the court needs to consider the impacts of this offense on each victim. Well, Your Honor, the victim is dead. The impact cannot be more grave. And on the people she's left behind, the impact will be heard by the court shortly, but it's fair to state that the death of Noe McGraver has fundamentally changed the nature and structure of this family. Sub B indicates the court needs to consider the impact of the offense on the community. That offense, this offense, has had a substantial and lasting impact, as testified to by Lieutenant Kinsella. Subsection C indicates that the threat and safety of the public needs to be considered by this court. The defendant had no motive in this case. His motive was to assist in Chayden, Chayden Miller. It was Chayden's motive. Jeremy was along in his words, quote, because he didn't want to seem like a pussy, end quote. That lack of motive could cut a couple of ways, but frankly, in increases the threat. I, th I think we might need to take a break here for a second. Um, the, the defendant's got a bloody nose. Oh, sorry. No, you are fine. We'll uh, let's take a break and see if we can get that taken care of. 